there's some bizarre connection between all the human beings on this planet, all of us together. There's some weird sort of uh, electrical, you know, some 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 connection that we all share. Oh, yeah. And if you disturb it, if you put shitty stuff out there, you're gonna feel it back. Yeah. You you really are. Yeah. But when once we understand that we control our environments, totally, and we all just really fucking cool to each other. We can like amass a whole hive of people who get that concept. Joseph Campbell, one of my heroes. Oh, yeah, he talks about the hero's journey, which is the ultimate archetype for human illumination. He's done a lot of lectures about the psychedelic experience as very, very literally uh, an experience of the hero's journey. I mean, consider yeah. consider the steps, you know, because the hero's journey obviously can be a geographical journey, right? Like go into the unknown, you know, step away from the ordinary, transcend obstacles, have an apotheosis and a rebirth and a realization about life and then come back and make the return with that illumination. But see, isn't that what happens anytime somebody partakes in a psychological trip? trip? We can dig into the gunflint church of South Africa and bring up fossils of, of uh, soft-bodied creatures that are close to three billion years old, six times the life of most stars in the universe. So when somebody's trying to tell you that what you, the universe is about is the life and death of stars, they're ignoring the fact that biology is a phenomenon as persistent as any phenomenon known to exist in the universe. And biology is not a static phenomenon. It isn't an endless recycling of, of fissionable materials the way star life is. Biological life has been steadily complexifying itself over the entire time span of its existence. So life is not marginal. Mind emerging out of life at its more complex levels of organization is not marginal. And we are not marginal. We are, I think, tremendously important in the cosmic drama and that a rational analysis of the situation will support that. In music, though, one doesn't make the end of a composition the point of the composition. If that were so, the best conductors would be those who played fastest. <laughs> and there would be composers who wrote only finales. <laughs> People go to a concert just to hear one crashing chord, because that's the end. <laughs> All the time, the thing is coming. It's coming, it's coming, that great thing, the, the success you're working for. Then when you wake up one day about 40 years old, you say, my God, I've arrived. <laughs> I'm there. And you don't feel very different from what you always felt. And there's a slight letdown because you feel there's a hoax. And there was a hoax. A dreadful hoax. They made you miss everything. We thought of life by analogy with a journey, with a pilgrimage, which had a serious purpose at the end. And the thing was to get to that end. Success or whatever it is, or maybe heaven after your death. But we missed the point the whole way along. It was a musical thing and you were supposed to sing or to dance while the music was being played.